So if you're a content creator, you're probably using DaVinci Resolve already, or you might be thinking about coming over to it. And you're probably aware there's a free version, which is highly usable, and there's also a studio version. So in this episode, what I wanna do is take my broadcast colorist hat off. Obviously I'm using studio version because I want all those exciting features. But as a content creator, I wanna show you how DaVinci Resolve full version actually helps me make quicker content. So I'm not even going into the color page. I'm just gonna show you five key things that the studio version will help you as a content creator. That's whether you're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, doesn't matter. So let's go and take a look. So I'm in the edit page and this is the actual episode I uploaded last week. So the first tool that I used was the voice isolation tool. So have a listen to this clip. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm literally just driving south through. So you can hear there's a lot of background noise in there. I've got the levels correct, so that's fine. But there's a lot of background noise in there. So the first thing I did was put voice isolation on. So if I click on here, and then play that through. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm literally so you can just... hear to start with, it's a little bit heavy because it puts it on at 100% here straight away. So what I want to do is just reduce that. And in order to keep playing it, I'm gonna press X, which will give me a mark in and mark out on that clip. And then what I can do is press option and forward slash, and that will play in to out. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm literally just driving south. Then I can stop pulling that back. Now, if I want that to play in a loop, if I click on here and then press option, forward slash, it will just keep playing in a loop and then I can adjust it. And you can even pop it out here if I bring that out there. And then let's go ahead and do that. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm literally just driving south through France. No idea where I'm going. I'm literally just driving south. So something like that. So that sounds miles better. It's got rid of all that background sound. And once that's mixed in with a bit of music, I've obviously muted the audio track, but it will sound much better. So watch this. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm literally just driving. So that sounds absolutely great. So number two in my list is the fact that this episode was all about drones and without studio, you can't actually import 10 bit drone footage. So I've got some footage here. And if I just play this through, this is drone footage here. So when you import the clips, what you'll see is media offline. So you need the full studio version to play back 10 bit H.264. So number three, I absolutely love this feature. When I upload this, YouTube is gonna generate its own subtitles for me and often it gets them wrong because I do quite a lot of technical explainers and it just gets the words confused. DaVinci Resolve Studio does a far better job than YouTube of analyzing the audio and creating subtitles for me. So let me show you how easy that is. I'm just gonna click on timeline. I'm gonna say create subtitles from audio hit create, it's gonna analyze my program, it's gonna generate the subtitles for me, and then watch. So let's just show you how accurate these are. I'm gonna... And looking forward to a good sleep. I've had a really long drive today. But the sat-nav has brought me through the Swiss Alps, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I'm about to get on a train. Mm -hmm. And obviously I can format these however I want, but what I want to do now is upload those to YouTube so that I'm using my own subtitles and not YouTube's. I can easily modify these as well. So all I've gotta do is go File, say Export, Export Subtitle, and the option you want is not SRT, you want to choose this one, SRT without formatting. Just press save, that's done. And then all I've got to do is upload that to YouTube and I've generated my own subtitles. You could even render these out with subtitles. So if you wanted subtitles burnt in, you can go to export here on delivery, you go to subtitle settings, okay? And what you want to do is export the subtitle, but not as a separate file, you want to click on here and say burn into the video and they will actually be rendered in so the subtitles are actually there permanently. So sometimes for shorts, I'll do this. So talking of shorts brings me nicely onto tip number four, and that's about reformatting this now for say YouTube shorts. It needs to be portrait mode, or maybe you work on TikTok or Instagram and you wanna work in portrait mode. Now you can do that in the free version. That's not a problem. I can convert this wide into portrait. Let me show you how. I'm gonna go to the cut page and I'm gonna change from here, from HD into portrait mode. Now, obviously I need to refill that frame and then we're gonna work with our X and Y positioning to get the best out of the shot. But I'm gonna show you an extra little feature. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this in the edit page actually. I can stay in the cut page, but I think it's easier for people to follow in here. I'm gonna highlight all these clips and what I'm gonna do is fill the frame. And then what I'm gonna do is play with X and Y to get the best positioning. So. To do that, what I've got to do is make sure that a particular shot is selected. If I adjust X and Y now, it's affecting all the shots that are highlighted. So I'm just gonna reset that by double clicking. I'm gonna deselect the shots. And now, as a little tip, instead of clicking on here, making an adjustment, and then if you move to another shot, this shot is still selected. So it's an easy mistake to make. So what I do when I'm doing this bit is I go to timeline and I say, selection follows playhead. And what that does is every shot that I'm on, you see that the selection follows it. So it's really easy to just go through and check your X and Y positioning when you've zoomed in for portrait. All right, let's have a look at one of the shots. So if I'm going down here, 
Let's just have a look. So maybe we want to just reframe them. You can do all this in the free version, and that's just affecting this one shot now, not all the shots because only one is selected. Back here, there's a shot of me. Here we go. So I, what's going to happen now is I'm going to come out of the frame. So what I want to do is keep me centered to the frame all the time. So I could keyframe that using the free version. We just add keyframes here. Or I can use this feature called Smart Reframe, and this is only in the full studio version. So watch this. This clip's highlighted. I'm going to press Reframe. It's going to analyze the shot, and if there's a human face in it, it will always favor that and try and keep it central. So watch what's happened now. If I play that back, it's just tracking me around. It's fantastic. And if you've got two people in a shot, let's say you're doing a podcast, it recognizes which one is talking and will reframe more central on them. So really clever, so that's a smart reframe. So my final reason to get DaVinci Resolve Studio if you're a content creator, tip number five, is that it's just gonna run faster. It's as simple as that. The studio version opens up all the GPU processing power that you have available and throws everything it can at processing your, your content as quickly as possible. So even things like, if I go to my preferences up here, I've got decode H.264 and H.265 using hardware acceleration. You don't get that on the free version. And the free version is restricted to just a single GPU. So that's a good enough reason, apart from all the other stuff that you're gonna get with it, like all the DaVinci Neural Engine stuff, the ability to work beyond 4K, all the stuff that's well documented. I hope these top five tips, just if you're a content creator, help you decide whether you wanna stay on the free version or upgrade to the studio version. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. So if you want to upgrade to Resolve Studio, it's going to cost you £245. That's a one-off fee, not a monthly payment, and that is upgrades for life for free. You also get a free Resolve Studio license if you buy the Speed Editor or the Editor's Keyboard or any one of the panels that work with DaVinci Resolve as well. And the Blackmagic cameras come with the full DaVinci Resolve Studio too.